Hello, in this, this video we're going to take the derivative of the logarithmic and exponential functions. I'll start out by just showing you the, the formula and we'll practice using them uh, for a little bit. Um, to start with uh, logarithms, um, if you have any general logarithm like this, log base a with a function u of x in the argument, um, the derivative has three parts. You have u prime on top, u on bottom, and then natural log of the base a on bottom also. That's, uh, that's the formula. Um, if you are fortunate enough to have y equals natural log u of x, then you're going to use the same uh, formula. You have u prime on top, u on bottom, and then natural log of the base. The base for natural log is e. Uh, so you have the natural log of the base on bottom. And that itself is 1. So for the natural log, um, even though the formula is the same, the derivative is just u prime over u for, for any sort of natural log. Uh, so let's just practice using this for, for a couple minutes. y equals uh, natural log. 10 over x. Let's just start start right there. Um, so in this case, u, I'm going to write this as 10x to the negative 1. u prime is negative 10x to the negative 2. And uh, so the derivative there is going to be uh, negative 10x to the negative 2 over 10x to the negative 1. And that is going to be the 10s are going to cancel out. Uh, you're going to have negative uh, x over x squared, which is just negative 1 over x. That's uh, fairly simple. Uh, maybe we'll just try, uh, try one more. We'll do uh, y equals uh, log uh, base 10 square root of x. Now this is kind of an interesting problem. I'm going to do it twice actually. Um, the first time I'm just going to I'm going to do it according to the formula. U equals x to the one half. U prime is one half. X to the negative one half. And then uh, so my derivative is going to have those three parts. Uh, U prime goes on top. One half. X to the negative one half. Uh, u goes on bottom, x to the 1 half, and then natural log of 10 on bottom as well because the base is 10. And I'm going to clean this up. So we'll have 1 half. x to the negative 1 half can come down and combine with that x to the 1 half and just be x. So that's that. Now I'm going to, I said I want to show you this one more time. Um, I'm going to do this using the properties of exponents and by simplifying it first. Um, if you have log base 10 of the square root of x, that's the same as log base 10 of x to the 1 half. And from your log properties from just basic algebra, this 1 half can come down as a coefficient. Uh, so really, this is 1 half log base 10 of just x. So when you look at your derivative, you're going to have 1 half as a coefficient, and then the derivative of x is 1, the original is x, and then log, natural log 10 on bottom gives you the same, uh, same result. Now in this particular problem, it wasn't really that much harder to do it the original way, u and u prime, um, but there will be some cases where if you can recognize a logarithmic property that you can simplify first, it will make your problem vastly easier. So this is something you should kind of really think about doing. I actually think this was quite a bit easier because instead of having fraction, fractional exponents and square roots, we had to combine. Uh, I just had that one half down here as a coefficient. It just chilled there the whole time. Never had to touch it. Uh, and then the derivative of x was 1, and, and we just wrote down x. So definitely, I think, a lot easier to do that. Uh, let's move on to the exponential function derivatives. Exponential functions will have derivatives that are also very straightforward. 
the most basic exponential function is that. Exponential functions have a base that is a number and an exponent that has uh, is a function of x. That's, what's, that's what makes an exponential function. Uh, that's how we know what an exponential function is. There's three parts here. The first part is you recopy the original unchanged. The second part is you multiply by the derivative of the x of the exponent, which is u prime. And then the third part is you multiply by the natural log of the base. Um, so if uh, if you have five to the x squared power, that's an exponential function. You will have the derivative be five to the x squared power times two x times natural log of five. Very simple. If you have y equals e to the x squared power, you will have y prime is e to the x squared power, and then times 2x, and then uh, the derivative of x squared, and then times natural log of the base, which is natural log of e, and that is actually just one. So again, if you have a base of e, things are a little easier. Let me show you a, a kind of a special example y equals just e to the x. The derivative for that is the original written again, multiplied by the derivative of x, which is 1, and then multiplied by that natural log of e, which is just 1. So the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. Uh, that's that's pretty, um, pretty interesting. Um, so if you see a derivative of e to the x, you know the derivative just itself. Um, so let's... Uh, Let's move on and uh, let's look at one last topic here uh, before we go on. Another use of uh, logarithmic derivatives um, that may not explicitly appear logarithmic uh, is something of this nature. y equals x to the square root of x plus 1 uh, over x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. So if you were to take the derivative of this, this would be a nightmare. Uh, yes, we have all the rules we need. We could do a quotient rule here. That would be f. You'd have a product rule with an embedded chain rule. And then down below, g would have a chain rule. You'd have to do all this, keep it straight, not make mistakes. That would be a total nightmare. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to choose to take the log of both sides here. And uh, bear with me. I'm going to write this as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. And then down here, x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Okay, the, the reason I've written this with a log on both sides is I'm going to take advantage of my log properties, the three log properties from Algebra 2, to break this up into three small logs rather than one big, huge, awful one. In general, in calculus, if you can take a difficult problem and break it into several more simple problems, that is a big win. That will make your life simpler. You should do that. Um, so, uh, and I'll just write down log of a times b, log of a plus log of b. That's one of my log properties. Log of a divided by b, log of a minus log of b, and then finally log of a to the n. So those are my three log properties here. I'll just kind of box those over to the side. I've got division here, so we'll use the middle log property first. Uh, I've got log of y is log of x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half minus natural log of x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Here we've got multiplication, so we'll just keep rolling. Natural log of y is natural log of x plus natural log of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half minus natural log of x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. Now, uh, I also have exponents. I'll use my third log property to bring that down, and then we'll stop for a minute and reflect on what to do next. So 1 half log of x squared plus 1 minus 2 thirds 
log of x plus 1. Okay, so um, I have sacrificed y equals something all in terms of x. So I'm going to have to use implicit differentiation now to, to follow through and find dy over dx. Um, however, I think that was worth the sacrifice because now I have one, two, three, four logs that I can each individually differentiate. They're all very simple. This is going to actually be a, a big time savings. Um, I'm going to take the derivative of natural log of y. If you recall, the derivative of a natural log is just derivative on top, original on bottom, u prime over u. Let's just kind of set this up before I do it. So that kind of shows you the, the format. Um, the derivative of, of, um, of natural log y, um, I'm just going to go ahead and you could use the dy dx notation. You'd have dy over y, and this would have a dx, and this would have a dx, and this would have a dx. I'm going to choose to use the y prime notation here and just kind of forego having the dx in all three terms. Uh, it's up to you, uh, but I think that will be a little more simple. y prime over y here, the derivative of natural log x, 1 over x. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, and then have x squared plus 1 down below. Here, uh, the derivative of x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. Um, I'm going to solve for y prime by multiplying by y. So y prime is y times 1 over x. These twos cancel out. Minus 2 thirds. So that is a correct derivative. It is in terms of x and y. Um, so if you do want to have only x, you have to take this, y equals that big mess, and stick it in right there. So let's just write this down one more time. y prime over x. Let me copy this down. And so in turn, instead of y, we're going to have uh, x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 over x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. That is my full derivative in terms of x, uh, all done. And as I said, you know, to do that by hand with the quotient rule and the product rule and two chain rules, that would be absolutely awful. So in trying to imagine trying to get all this correct, I, I can't imagine. So anyway, that's a way that you can utilize the derivative of logs along with the log properties uh, to uh, take the derivative of really awful things that don't seem to have any other good avenues.